We don't want to fight over those seats next to the windows here this morning. <laughs> We're not fighting over those fans either this morning, eh? Hey? What a blessing. <laughs> venue, the place where we can meet together, Lord. We just ask God to be pleased to meet with us this morning. Help us, Lord, to be able to sing with purpose in our heart that we might glorify our Saviour. And Lord, we ask that you be pleased with everything said and done. We do pray, Lord, that your hand be upon our pastor, that you help him this morning as he preaches your word, give him liberty. Lord, we ask that you might remove any distractions that we might be given over, uh, Lord, our, our full attention to thee. And Lord, we're so thankful for it now as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's sing uh, 271 in your hymn books, 271. My anchor holds. And we could be upstanding if you're able. 271. Let's sing unto the Lord now. Let's be upstanding. Oh, the angry surges roll on my tempest given soul. I am peaceful for I know what the gold of the winds may blow. I'm an anchor safe and true, and evermore
Hey, I woke up this morning, there was a, I had a message from Brother Buster Kinsey. Remember Brother Buster? Mm. Someone's been around for a while. Mm. He said to greet the church. He said he's praying for the church this morning. And so he's over there in the States, uh, ministering there. So he said, he said, please let the church know we're praying for him. Love him and praying for him. So there you have it. News, good news from a far country this afternoon. Uh, we have the Opal Ministry with Brother Michael uh, at 3 p.m., and then this our evening service, we're going to go back in. <laughs> Hopefully, the power will be back on tonight. It's not that we have not paid the power bill. They're doing a, they're doing yeah. some upgrades out here, yeah, and so we've got no there's no power from about eight eight a.m. to three thirty. So in theory, we should have power again back in yonder tonight. Uh, <clears throat> and then after our evening service, we're having a a business meeting. Uh, if you're able to attend, please do. Now, looking ahead in, in your notices, looking ahead, uh, there's the over over 50 swap meet. And that's just going to be down here in this in this building at the back here. But everybody is invited. Morning tea is um, is uh, will be will, will be provided on that morning, 10 a.m. If you can make it, if you want to get rid of your junk, bring it in and let somebody else make it <laughs> home for you. Amen. So. <laughs> yeah, just, just something to consider, <laughs> and um, it's always a good way to do that. Amen. <laughs> I've never been to a swap meet before, but I like going to the ones where they've got car parts. Amen. But my wife will tell me, don't bring home somebody else's junk. So uh, I already know what the deal is. And we'll be minute. Uh, you know, our, our regular ministry is coming up there as per notices. Uh, we do have in here on the table just inside we have the uh, some maps produced there's there are eight maps produced one's already gone so there's seven left there's a bunch of tracks there and invitations to pass on to people if you'd like to do some letterboxing in our local area this time it's going to be over in the the Karamundi area if you if you uh, got a few moments and you'd like to take care of that sometime this month there's there's seven maps there pass out Let's see if we can get the gospel into somebody's home. Amen. Now, we, we haven't prayed yet, have we? Yes. We have? Was I sleeping? <laughs> I must have been sleeping or praise the Lord. Yeah, I haven't prayed. Yeah. Well, good. <laughs> I just want to make sure. I'd hate to go to church and not have prayed and say, God, please meet with us. Amen. Oh, okay. Well, we're all on the same page then, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure God, we want to make sure God speaks to us. We want to make sure that the morning is blessed of God. We're seeking His blessing upon it. We're trying to find God's mind on on service, order of service, and preaching and everything. Let's uh, let's see. Well, I believe that the Lord has better hearing than Neil does. But, uh, I trust that He heard our prayer this morning. And uh, that swap meet now that went out live, didn't it? So we might get people coming up in their HRs and EHs and XYs and they swap me up there at the church. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right, let's uh, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-
sunshine and rain, harvest of rain, peace my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, and true to Him I'll be. Oh, how good I this friend deny when He's so true. Salvation is one of those things that you can know. Amen. It's not a you don't if you've got a hope so religion, there's something wrong. Well, I hope I'm going to heaven. I hope I'm doing all right. It's, it, it should be more than a hope so. It's a no so. Amen. I know. Amen. Oh, too often we get to thinking, oh yeah, I hope so. No, no, it's settled. Sometimes you don't wake up saved in the morning. It don't matter. You're still saved. You're still a child of God. Things haven't happened. Things haven't changed. Just it's still the it's still the same old, same old. You're saved. You just don't feel like it right now. You don't know what's been bouncing around inside your head overnight. You never wake up in the morning and realize there's some goofy things happen inside your head. You know, what were you dreaming or you get through the day, then you started remembering sort of what was going on inside there overnight. You think, oh Lord, I need to confess that. I I've forgotten all about that. And all, but some crazy stuff happens. But if you were there when it happened, you ought to know. 
Jesus. You ought to know. First Thessalonians chapter four. First Thessalonians and, and chapter four. Last last Sunday morning, can anybody remember what we considered last Sunday morning? Oh, please don't disappoint me. <laughs> what, what, what was it? Watching. Watching. And what were we supposed to be watching for? Return. The return. Thank you, Vern. Thank you. Appreciate that. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. I got to thinking after last week that thought on, on watchfulness and that came from the idea of our Sunday school hour of Mark chapter 13 when we considered there Jesus said a couple of times about watch and pray. And then I was thinking about watchfulness last week. What are we watching for? The next thing that we are watching for is we are watching for the Lord's return. The day of the Lord chapter 5 and verse 2 the day of the Lord, that's coming up. And the first event, the first thing that kicks off, the day of the Lord is the rapture of the church when the church is taken out of this world in, into, into heaven. The, the, uh, the, the rapture is the first thing that takes place. Christ's return, Christ's return takes part in two stages. All the prophecies of the Old Testament point to Point to uh, Jesus coming back, the Son of Man coming back in power and glory to rule and to reign. There are two important passages. Uh, if you want, turn, let's, let, let's turn over to 1 Corinthians 15. Hold your place because we're coming back to 1 Thessalonians. There are, there are two important passages concerning the Lord's return. 1 First, First Thessalonians 4, the verses that we read through to chapter 5 verse 6. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 51. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Somebody's put that at the top of a nursery door, of a church nursery door. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That's not what it's talking about. He's talking about the Lord coming back. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. The Lord's, the Lord's return is in two stages, that we're told. He will, he will return to this earth, as Brother Michael said in the Sunday School Hour. He's going to set foot upon the Mount of Olives. And it's going to clave in, it's going to clave 
it's going to it's going to pull in two pieces. The Son of Man is going to descend. He's going to stand on the Mount of Olives. He's going to take vengeance on the enemies of Israel. He's going to he's going to be doing all that. But before that happens, the first thing that's going to happen is he's going to call us. He's going to call the church out of this place to meet him in the end. That's the next thing on. That's the next part of the timetable. That's what's happening next. He, he's going to come down. He's going to be. There's going to be signs and, and uh, wonders. We we considered that last week as well. But the church is going to be raptured out of here now. People say, well, the rapture. The word rapture is not a Bible word. No, it's not. It's not a Bible word. Neither is the word Trinity, and we use it. Neither is substitution. Neither uh, what what other things? Surrender. But, they, but those words just describe a biblical scriptural truth. So too, the word rapture describes a truth. The English word rapture means ecstasy, joy, delight, bliss. But the word rapture comes from a Latin word meaning to seize quickly or suddenly to snatch away. And verse 17 of chapter 4 that we read says, that we will be caught up. He's going to take us out of this place. And, and uh, uh, what's the speed of that? In the twinkling of an eye. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, not going, it's not going to be like the old westerns. No, no, no. No, it's going to be quick. It's going to be slick. And the Lord's going to do it and no one's going to see it. It's just going to happen. I'd like us to look, look down through these things here today. These verses that we read, we won't go through them how they're recorded in Scripture. What I want to do is go through them in chronological order. So what? So what's going to be happening in each step as we come through these things? Have a look firstly in, uh, in verse 3. Well, uh, verse, let's, go, let, let's read verses, <coughs> excuse me, verses 1 through 3. But of the times and seasons, brethren... Ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety. The first, the first thing that happens is that there will be a soothing lie told to this world. Peace and safety. Oh, folks, there's nothing to worry about. It's, it's, it's all right. Uh, you can remain seated. Remain calm, please. There is nothing to worry about. Peace and safety. But we're told that, that when they're saying peace and safety, beware. Sudden destruction. Beware. Something's going to happen. You've heard the phrase, when you least expect it, expect it. When you least expect the return of Christ, expect it. They call Papua New Guinea the land of the unexpected. Things will just happen up there that you just don't expect to happen. Things will just happen. Well, the first thing that's going to happen, the first thing is that there is going to be a soothing lie told. Governments and organisations are saying, peace, peace. They're saying, they're saying peace and safe. There, there is nothing, look, nothing to fear. Yeah, look, a little bit of a ruckus going on in this part of the world or, or that part of the world. But, but be at peace. It, it, it's all good, no problem. Nothing to see here. It's all good. Peace and safety. Governments and organisations are doing it. Educators are doing it. Uh, legislators are doing it. Scientists are doing it. Philanthropists are doing it. Humanitarians are also. It, it, it's all good. Everyone just needs to calm down. We'll be fine. But that's when the Lord says, the day of the Lord is going to start. So please don't, please don't swallow a lie. Please don't, please don't think just because the world is saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. That's out of Jeremiah, twice in Jeremiah. He says peace, peace, when there is no peace. Jeremiah says, you, the, uh, the Lord says, that ye have healed the hurt of my people slightly. You've given them a false sense of security. You're telling them something that's not true. Peace. Peace. When there is no peace. 
they, those false prophets that were saying that they were claiming that they were speaking in the name of the Lord they, they, they were that they were men that didn't have a heart for God at all in Jeremiah chapter 5 the, the Lord says they have belied the Lord he said they have misrepresented me they have belied the Lord they've misrepresented they're telling things to the people that I have not said and times have not changed from back yonder to now even today there's still that idea of peace 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 and safety relax everybody it's all good it's all good i'm a car salesman you know what what well, whatever it is but there is no peace the only time see the peace that they're thinking of is the absence of conflict but that's not real peace real peace is in a person the prince of peace that's where pre that's where peace is at a positive ministry a positive ministry sure goes a long way today they're popular positive preachers positive messages they're the most popular they, they when, when, when they when they don't uh, cause a ruckus or a stir when they don't step on anybody's toes oh they're well thought of they get people behind them they get money and all that sort of stuff but beware the first thing that happens is that there is a soothing lie told to this world mm -hmm. come back to verse 16 what's the next thing that happens verse 16 for the Lord himself shall, des shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God the next thing that happens is there are sounds to be heard there is a sound that's going to be heard and I do not believe the world will hear that sound. I do, I believe that only Christians will hear that sound. I don't believe the world is going to hear it. It says that Jesus, when he comes back, is going to be with a shout. I wondered, is that the shout of a victor? Or, or is that the shout of the, of the bridegroom that's coming for his bride? And he's happy he's, he's going to get his bride the one that was promised him so many years ago is that the shout Woo! i'm going to get her <laughs> i worked with a fella and uh oh well i worked with a couple of fellas actually there's but there's one fella he's 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 in his early 40s and sometimes he just walk into the crib room and without any prompting he'll do that go and the other guy I work with, he's up almost 65, he's retired now, and he would jump. <laughs> Every time that would happen, he, he, he jumps. And I, I'd smile. I'm smiling at what Jono done with his wool, and I'm laughing at Digger with his jump. <laughs> Do you know, folks, when we hear the Lord shout, now I don't know what sort of what it's going to be, but when the Lord says something, when he goes, woo! We are going to jump to attention. <laughs> Notice, secondly, there is the voice of the archangel. Now, the archangel, the Lord would send the archangel on missions. They were his messengers. They were also the leaders of his military. So, so here we have a military presence as well. The archangel with the voice of the archangel. Thirdly, with the trump of God. Oh, you're going to hear the trump. Even if whatever happens to Donald Trump, there's still one more to come. We got it. There's a trump that's going to be sounded in the skies. And they're going to hear it. And if you've ever heard a trumpet solo, the sound of a trumpet will it easily our auditorium. It just fills it. The sound that it puts out. And so too, when the Lord descends from heaven, He's going to send with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God everywhere in this world is going to hear it no matter where no matter where they are they were go, they are going to hear that sound uh the the uh is it the ariana trench off of the coast of australia said to be the deepest of uh undersea uh, uh, underwater trench in the world 10 odd kilometer that's some phenomenal depth if anybody is down in there they'll still hear it no matter how deep the cave, they'll still be heard. Yeah. When he descends, there's going to be a shout. There's going to be a sound heard. Every Christian, I believe, will hear it. I'm not convinced that the world will hear when he comes back. I'm not. I'm not convinced. Paul, when Paul gave 
when Paul gave his testimony in, in Acts 22, in verse 9, he, this is what he said, And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. I don't know that the world is going to hear what a Christian will hear. But that's the next thing that happens. We're going to hear the world say, peace and safety. She, you know, typical Aussie, she'll be right, mate. She's good. That's the first thing, that soothing lie. It brings that, it, 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 uh, people become lethargic. They get settled. They've got that false assurance, that false peace. Oh, it's right. But there's plenty of time. I, I, I don't have to act now. I don't have to do it now. There's time to come. Peace and safety. Last week, remember, we don't know the time. We don't know the hour. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. But then there's a shout. There's a sound that will be heard. With the sound, we find thirdly, the Saviour will descend. For the Lord himself shall descend. There's a soothing lie. There's a sound that will be heard. We have the Saviour that will descend. Notice, for the Lord himself. He's not sending a substitute. Oh, sorry, the Lord couldn't make it. Uh, but, but he sent me instead. Would you all come up here, please? Yeah, no. The Lord himself shall step out. He's going to step out on that cloud and he's going to call his children, just like that old song says. And he's going to call his children up on high. The Lord himself. There's not going to be a substitute. There's not going to be a proxy. There's, there's not going to be anybody else that's come. In Acts chapter 1, this same Jesus... The same Jesus that you saw leave this world, he told his disciples. The same Jesus that you see go in there and he's coming back. The same Jesus. The same one as in the Garden of Gethsemane. The same one that graciously lived in this world. The same one that gave his life. The same one that groaned on the tree. The same one that's in the book of Revelation and that he is glorified in that book. The sa this same Jesus, the same one is coming back. Yeah. Amen. This same Jesus. Glory. He's not going to send a substitute. No. He won't time out. He's waiting to come back. Remember with that shout. There's going to, not only will that will that come, not only will he come, it's going to be with a shout. So people try to spiritualize it. Uh, different things I, I, I've read about it. Oh, they said that's that 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 uh, that means the coming of the Holy Spirit. Then others will say, no, Jesus came back at Pentecost. Some say, no, it's death. They spiritualize it. No, this same Jesus that you have seen go into heaven, the same one that you see take off, disciples, from the Mount of Olives to go into heaven, that same Jesus, he's coming back. And he's going to set himself up. Hallelujah. You just think, man, oh, what's all going to happen? You really don't have to care if you realise he's coming back. Amen. And you want to and you want to make sure you're in on that deal. Amen. I, uh, years ago, there was a bumper sticker, and and, it, and all it said was, "Guess who's coming back?" And boy, is he mad! <laughs> the first time Jesus came into this world as a lamb, the next time he comes into this world as a lion. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's going to be a very different Jesus. Uh, this same Jesus, but he's got a he's got a different ministry. Yes. Next time he comes back, he's coming back. Mm -hmm. It said that G in Hebrews chapter thirteen, we're told that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. The same Jesus that was that was with the disciples, the same Jesus that walked those roads of Galilee and Israel. Judea, Palestine, Samaria. This same Jesus is the same one that's coming back. Hallelujah. We're talking about the rapture of the church this morning. Why is he coming back? Because he said he would. That's right. He promised he would. In John chapter 14, he says, If you believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. In my Father's house are many mansions. Yeah. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. That sounds like a good deal. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, he said, I will come again and receive you. He said, I'm coming back to get you. The idea of it is, he has promised to come back to get his people. Yeah, the second reason why he's coming back, he's got a wife to get. <laughs> the bride, the church, he's got a wife to get. And he's coming back to get his bride. He's coming back to get his own. We notice, we notice that when he does come back, At the end of 14, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. When he comes back, he's bringing the people, he's bringing the spirits of the people that, are, that have already died in Jesus. Which brings me to the fourth thought. The next thing, there's that soothing lie. There's a sound that will be heard. The Savior descends. He does not come into this world. He doesn't. He does not set foot on earth yet. He comes into the atmosphere. He's in the skies. He's in the air. And because he says we shall meet him in the air, mm -hmm. so we're going to meet him in the air. The Savior descends. The next thing that happens is that is that the sleeping will be raised. Mm -hmm. The sleeping will be raised. Verses thirteen through fifteen. For I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Which are, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if ye believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Now what Paul's giving them isn't something of his own. It's something that the Lord has given him by the word of the Lord. Something that the Lord said uh, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. The Thessalonian believers must have had a question concerning them which are asleep to them which were asleep in Christ. Uh, well, what do you mean asleep in Christ? Uh, it, the, the idea of that is that when somebody when somebody dies trusting Jesus Christ as their saviour, when they die, their, bo they, their body dies but their spirit and soul leave this world to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The body only is in the ground. Don't ever think, oh, there's soul sleep. No, there's no such thing as soul sleep. No. The body sleeps, not the not the spirit. It's gone. It's 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 over on the it's already over on the other side with him. They uh, Paul grounded these people. He taught them in every one of the chapters of First Thessalonians. He talks to them about the coming of the Lord. He talks to them. It's mentioned about the about his coming, being ready at his coming. So they, they, were, they were instructed, they were grounded in the resurrection, they were grounded in the second coming. But they had trouble putting the two together. Have you ever had that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this thought and this thought, but I just can't get the correlation between them. I can't get the, the, the relation between them. So Paul is writing to them to, to try to ease their misunderstanding. I, wouldn't have, I would not have you to be ignorant. I, I don't want you to, to, to miss this. I don't want. I want to make sure that it's clear in your mind, so that you understand. What I want you to know is that when Jesus comes back, the dead in Christ, those that are already dead, Jesus comes back with their spirits into the air, and then at that moment, their bodies are going to come up out of the ground. They're going to get a, a new body, a resurrection body, a body that's going that is made for eternity that's made to live <clears throat> not to live in this world but to live in eternity they're going to get a new body after the saviour comes the next thing
thing that happens is that the sleeping will be raised. We read in Scripture of the first resurrection. <coughs> if there's a first resurrection, there must mean there's at least one more. We want to make sure we don't miss the first resurrection. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be. caught up is number five the saved will be caught up there's a soothing lie there's a sound to be heard the saviour will descend the sleeping shall rise the saved the living Christians living in this world at the time when Jesus Christ comes they will be caught up in all the in all of this. I'm going to say commotion, but all in, in all of this action. He steps out. The sound is heard. The the dead in Christ bodies are going to be raised up. They're going. To go. Is that going to be a physical body? It says flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't believe it's flesh and blood. It's a body like under his glorious body, a body that can that can move about, a body that can pass through things. I don't know all the extent of it. Don't try to come and ask me all these goofy <laughs> questions. It, we're not going to have a body that we are going to have to wash, clean, shave, shower, and everything else. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> we don't have to rub Denka rub in or, or any of those other things. We don't have to clean our teeth to get rid of bad breath. We, have, we haven't got to brush our hair. Men, a good thing. If you don't want to brush your hair, put a cap on. I'm telling you, it works. I've got to go get my cap. What, what do you need a hat for? So I don't have to brush my hair. I put a hat on, I'll walk out. And that way, when you take your hat off, you've got hat hair, it doesn't matter. Who cares? <laughs> but we haven't, got to, we haven't got to mess with it. The dead rise out of the ground, and we which are alive and remain, as they're moving through, we are changed the saved are changed, their bodies are changed to get a glorified body, a body, 1 Corinthians, a body incorruptible, a body that will that, that is built for eternity. It, it were, uh, we're caught up to go into heaven, to go into the sky, and then we all go to heaven. Now, who knows what a twinkling of an eye is? Do you know how they define the twinkling of an eye? The, the speed of light as it passes through the eyeball hits the back of the eye and is reflected to the front of the eye. So that is, the, that is what is defined as the twinkling of an eye. Now let me give you some math. You're going to love this. Light travels Yes. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Yes. That means in one second, light will travel over seven times around the equator of the Earth. Within one second. Now that's moving. So, in the twinkling of an eye, the, 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 the speed which light passes through the lens to the back of the eye, reflected onto the front of the eye, that's a twinkling. It's about one billionth of a second. You don't see it. Or you, you, get on, you get online and, and some engineering person, I was going to call a nerd or egghead, they worked it all out at how fast that actually is, how fast light travels. The, the, the eyeball, the average eyeball is 26.6 millimetres deep. And so you double that. How fast does, does light travel in 50, over 53 millimetres? Two inches. 
That's fast. A billionth of a second. <coughs> so, in the twinkling of an eye, he steps out, we hear, he steps out, the dead in Christ rise, we're caught up, and we're with the Lord there. In the twinkling of an eye, we got a, we got a glorified body. Amen. Don't bother trying to go through a transformation. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't try to get the makeover. Oh, this is the best makeover you're ever going to get. But you just got to wait. You got to make sure you're saved. You got to make sure, yes, I'm saved. I know I'm a Christian. And, I'm, and I, I, know, I, I know Christ is my Savior. I know that for sure. Coming up, I'm telling you, you've got a home in heaven and you've got a make you've got a makeover coming that will not nothing in this world even compares to it. Mm. Millions of Christians are going to disappear. Mm. Oh, they're gonna have they're gonna have all sorts of reasons, the aliens. Yes. <laughs> I, I, it's gonna be great to see. Have you ever wondered why people talk about alien abductions now? Oh. So there's gonna come a time when they could just say aliens took them, something's happened. That's right. If flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, what's going to be left after the rapture takes place? They'll see, they'll see the clothes. But I've wondered if flesh and blood, flesh is about 80% water, does that mean to say they'll see the clothes and blood and water where our clothes lie, where we stood? as we're raptured out. What are people going to find when they come looking for a Christian for people that have gone missing? In a flash, a billionth of a second, the twinkling happens. What's going to be left? If you, if you think people have anxiety problems now imagine finding millions of sets of clothes and people disappear take away the blood and the water that just might be a smithism i might not have that right what are people going to do just realizing that that millions have disappeared and all that's left is their clothes Others have disappeared. Enoch disappeared. Elijah disappeared. The Lord Jesus disappeared. There's going to come a time when we're going to be clothed with uh, immortality. We're going to be clothed with something that doesn't change. Now we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Remember Ephesians chapter 2 says that, that Satan, he's a prince of the power of the air. So, so now think of this. We've got the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It looked like his life was defeated. He's gone. But when he comes back for his people, he's going to be in Satan's domain, in the air. The trumpet's going to sound and the Lord is going to mass an army, a body of people in Satan's, back, in Satan's backyard, ready to take him off into heaven. Man, how, how disappointing that's going to be for Satan. Satan thought he ruled this world. He, th he thinks he rules the power. He's the prince of the power of the air. God's going to put together something in his own backyard. <laughs> it's just the beginning of the end. So shall we ever be with the Lord. And that's our final resting place. I don't have to go no further. Mm -hmm. Wherever we go, we'll go with him forever with the Lord. We were saved by him. We were made like him. And then we'll be forever with him. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just you can't get you can't get a better deal than that. You're just taken out of this world, and that's the next thing we're supposed to be looking for. He's gone to prepare a place. Mm -hmm. And he said, when it's ready, I'm coming back. Right. And, we'll be and we'll be taken out of this world. In John chapter 17, let me read you this verse. Father, now this is chapter, 
chapter 17, John 17, is Jesus' high priestly prayer. Towards the end of it, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. It'll be an answer to prayer when Jesus comes back to receive his own. I like the song we didn't sing that this particular song this morning. They said, Oh Lord Jesus, how long ere we shout the glad song. Christ returneth, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. <laughs> He's coming back. The next the next thing that happens, what else is going to happen? Chapter 5 and verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, colon, semicolon, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. There is going to be next sudden destruction. It's going to come at a time, remember? When it's unexpected it's going to come at a time when millions of, of religious people is it what the world will think millions of religious people will disappear but then, so there'll be no, so nobody will be in churches on, on on that on that next sunday i think there'll still be people in churches that next sunday because they're not saved not genuinely born again they profess christianity but they do not possess Christianity. They they profess. They make a good testimony. They make a good sound. But they don't possess him. I believe after Jesus comes back, Christians are taken out of this world. I do believe there will be people that will still turn up in church just like they always used to. Not having an understanding, not having an idea of all that's taking place sudden destruction it's easy to think well, after after all after the rapture happens isn't that when the the tribulation starts yes oh and there'll be destruction there but but can i can i am i allowed to use a little bit of sanctified imagination what if there are christians flying planes trains buses cars yeah. operating equipment what what and they and they instantly disappear and there's no co-pilot in those planes are those planes going to land safely uh is it zucker zuka whatever his name is uh, he hasn't quite got ai down yet they can't land a plane Sanctified imagination. Are they going to fall out of the sky? Are trains going to run into other trains? Are buses and cars just going to career until they come to a stop because there's nobody at the controls? I believe there will be sudden destruction as soon as Christians leave this world. I believe there will be destruction. I believe things will take place. Yes. Families will be destroyed. If you look at it at another angle, families will be destroyed churches will be destroyed things will happen if a, if a, if the if the leader of a particular country is christian and he is taken out of this world what's going to happen to that oh imagine the turmoil that's going to happen in this world just when christians disappear just forget even forget all that millions of people disappear without answer and then they say, well, what's going to happen? All the people that are already on antidepressants and everything else, help them to keep them balanced. Imagine what's going to happen to them when they realize without answer, hundreds of, hundreds of millions of people disappear and gone. What, what's the state of this world going to be when they realize? They call up, hey, mum, 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 son, son, are you there? not answering 
We're not answering where. Did they get taken to? They were religious. They, but, but they gone. The next thing to happen after that is that sudden destruction. So what's going to happen? We're told last weekend, we're told to watch for the coming of the Lord. So I'm giving you the coming of the Lord. <coughs> we're already hearing peace and safety. So there's a soothing lie. In the twinkling of an eye, in the billionth of a second, <coughs> there's going to be a, a sound. The Saviour steps out. The sleeping are raised, the saved are caught up, and then once we're taken out of the world, then there's sudden destruction. Brother Neil, so what's in all of this? Do you have another point? Actually, I do, for Brother Michael's sake, seven points. <laughs> the seventh point is this. There is a sermon to live. Chapter 6, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 6. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. There's a sermon to live. What's the, Brother Neil, what's the sermon? Be ready. Be watching. Be sober. Be paying attention. The Lord could come back. We've got to be watching. We don't, but when? We don't know when. We've got to be watching us last week. So we live accordingly. We live the way we ought to live. Believing that he is going to come back. We live the way we ought. We are to watch and be sober. We're told, let us therefore not sleep. Therefore, in light of all this, he says, don't sleep. Don't fall asleep. Watch. Pay attention, be vigilant, be diligent, be aware, be alert. He's coming back. Amen. Romans, let, let, let's read just a couple of verses and, um, and we'll finish off. I couldn't, I couldn't have left last week's thought with watch. For the coming of the Lord. Well, brother, what's the, the coming of the Lord? <coughs> the Lord's going to return. It's going to be the start. It's going to be the start of the day of the Lord. Romans chapter 13. Verse 11. And that knowing the time. That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for, for the flesh to fulfil the lusts of the flesh. We're told not to sleep, then we're told verse 13, 14. We're told how to live. Let's go over to Luke. Luke 12. Luke 12. <coughs> the sermon to live. What's the sermon to live? watch and be sober we need to take it seriously we need to be watching serious about it clear clear headed about it luke chapter 12 verse 34 luke 12 34 for where your treasure is there will your heart be also let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will uh, when he will return from the wedding 
that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are thy servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and he shall come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, there are four watches in the night, from six to nine, from nine to twelve, from twelve to three, from three to six. So if he comes in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants, and this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, mm -hmm. he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye know not. The sermon to live, be ready. Watch and be sober. That's the sermon to live. The day of the Lord. The soothing lie. The sound that will be heard. The saviour descends. The sleeping rise. The saviour caught up. Sudden destruction happens after that. If you're left here in sudden destruction, you're prepared. You know what's going to happen. It's going to be turmoil. It's going to be chaos. Terrible. The sermon to live by. We need to be ready. We need to be ready. We don't know when. And Paul writes, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Christian, that ought to comfort you. It ought to provoke us into, into um, evangelism. It ought to provoke us into a heart for people. It ought to provoke us to be ready, living the way we ought to be living. To be ready. If you're a Christian, it ought to comfort you. If you're not a Christian, it ought to concern you. There's no, there's no way out. I'm sorry, I missed the bus. There's, there's no way to get on that train. It's not. You're stuck here. Are you ready? Does it concern you getting left behind? Christian, is it too much in this world that you want to do? You, you're not ready? You, you just couldn't walk out of this world when you need to? You better have a, you better have a light grip of everything in this world because one day we're, we're, we're walking out. We're, we could be flying out. We'll leave this. Oh, how much notice will I get? You'll get no notice. You just leave this world straight into the next. The sermon to live. Be ready. Be ready. We'll close in a word of prayer. I pray these things. I pray you just don't put them off. I pray that you might look at life differently. And you might take a light. You, you, you might just lighten your grip on things in this world. There's nothing in this world so important that you've got to miss heaven for. There's nothing so important in this world that you've got to delay going there. Oh Lord, you just give me a little bit more time. Yeah. Oh no. no. Just get ready to walk out. Yeah. Get ready to leave out. May God give us wisdom and courage for these days. Amen. Yes. Are you ready? Watch and pray. Watch and be silent. Father, sobering thoughts here this morning from thy word. But my God, I am looking forward to the time when we just leave this world, when we when we just take off and we and we are forever with the Lord. No more moves. We just we can gaze upon that face. We can look upon the one who saved us by his grace. We we can just take a glimpse of him every day, just day in and day out. For eternity we can 
get to see the one that died for us. Lord, those of those with crowns, we will be able to cast those crowns at Jesus' feet. Oh Lord, we look forward to that time. I pray there's nothing in our hearts that's gonna Lord that, that would take away the joy, the excitement, the anticipation of leaving this world to be forever with thee. I pray you might speak to our hearts and just point it out that our God we know just what it is that might have our heart more than you. And Lord, if there's anybody under the sound of my voice that doesn't know for sure, I pray, my God, that you'd concern their souls. I pray that you trouble them. Lord, if they've got this chance. What happens after the rapture, we're not exactly sure. But our Father, we ask that, Lord, while they have time, they might make a decision for Christ, turn away from sin, turn away from their life in this world and everything that they're trying to accomplish, and just have a heart for thee and be ready for your return. Eternity is a long time to mess it up by a few years here on earth. Lord, be working in our midst now, we pray. I'm thankful for the good spirit here this morning, for the liberty to preach, and I pray that you give us a restful afternoon. Meet with us tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you all for being here this morning. Appreciate it.